little baby, I've been waiting for you to come into my life for such a long time. Now you're finally here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Hmm. I've come over all funny like. It's an odd feeling seeing something brand new with a Sinclair logo. But I can't say I've not been warned. Even the box tells me to be prepared for love. This is an issue one Spectrum Next, the honorary successor to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And the story is a bit like a film franchise that went off the rails and is now forgetting the movies that people didn't like and just carrying on from where the good ones ended. Sinclair's official Terminator 3. The history of the Spectrum Next starts, perhaps oddly, in Brazil in 2010 as a, follow this if you can, clone of a clone of a copy of a mix of a Spectrum and a Commodore Plus 4, itself a bootleg copy of a UK ZX Spectrum and called the TK90X, sold in Brazil by Micro Digital, not the UK Micro Digital, a Brazilian company that used the same name and logo. In 2016, the two creators, and apologies for the pronunciation, Victor Trucco and Fabio Bellavenuto released the TB Blue board, the original bare motherboard for hobbyists to assemble themselves. The board was moderately successful in the hobbyist market in Brazil, but the duo wanted to bring the TB Blue to the UK, the ancestral home of the original Spectrum. With Enrique Olivier and the legendary designer of the original ZX81 and Spectrum computers, the late Rick Dickinson, joining the team, the Spectrum Next was announced to the world by way of a Kickstarter campaign. The original £250,000 goal was entirely smashed, and over 3,000 folks pledged nearly three quarters of a million pounds to see this dream realised. Spin forward to March 2020, and the machines were being delivered. And with only 3,000 in circulation, second-hand prices went through the roof. I remember seeing these issue 1 units changing hands at nearly £1,000 each. So apart from carrying the Sinclair brand and the Spectrum name, what's the big deal about the Spectrum next? There's no doubt it's a beautiful machine, but why are people willing to pay so much for the opportunity to fall in love again? Let's find out. Firstly, there's no denying its heritage. It's clearly a Spectrum. Here, next to a Spectrum Plus, its older brother by 36 years, the design motif is so tight that it binds the machines together undeniably, while still rooting each in their respective decades. It's an amazing accomplishment by Rick Dickinson and the design team. Secondly, from an engineering perspective, it's a really clever piece of kit. It's a melding of two ages, with two inbuilt Atari D-Type joystick ports taking pride of place at the front. Whilst at the side, there's an SD card slot providing full DIV MMC integration, removable storage and an easy way to deploy firmware updates, along with a reset button, just like the Spectrum Plus. The back of the machine holds all manner of goodies. There's the power input, not compatible with your old Spectrum PSU. There's a fully hardware compatible expansion slot, HDMI output, an ear and mic socket should you want to use cassettes, audio out, an RGB output, and PS2 socket for a mouse or external keyboard. There's also the curiously titled Digital Video Debug Port, which is currently blanked off, along with some small blanked off mini USB sockets. And on the bottom are a couple of extending legs, again like the Spectrum Plus. These help create a more comfortable typing position for some people. So it definitely looks the part, and even though we haven't turned it on yet, I'm getting a nice warm fuzzy feeling. Let's see if it goes as good as it looks. Um. 
Under the hood, this Spectrum Next is running a Z80 processor, implemented through a Field Programmable Gate Array, or FPGA, and running at the original Spectrum's 3.54 MHz, along with turbo modes of 7 and 14 MHz. There's also 1 MB of RAM installed, with 768K usable. Through a combination of firmware updates and hardware upgrades, there's the addition of a 28 MHz turbo mode, an increase in memory to 2 MB with 1768K available, and the addition of a Wi-Fi module, an accelerator card in the form of a Raspberry Pi Zero, and a real-time clock. We'll be going through the software updates today in order to unlock that 28 MHz mode as I want to play Driller at more than one frame per second, but we'll leave the hardware updates to the next entry in the series. Powering on the next for the first time, we can see we have Core 3.00.00 and firmware 1.20. We select Digital Output, the HDMI port, and up pops a nice welcome message. I'm sure it's lovely, but I'll read it later. We get a rather unceremonious beep when we try to go higher than 14 MHz. So let's update the firmware and unlock all that extra speed. Our first stop is the Spectrum Next website. The link is in the description below and there's a lot of useful information and guidance to be found there. We need to navigate to the downloads and then select latest distro. As of this video, the latest distro is 1.3.2 RTM and you'll find the link to the download a little way down the page. Once downloaded, you'll need to extract all of the files and copy everything to a freshly FAT32 formatted SD card. Completely power off your next and insert your SD card before powering back on. I'm told to press the U button to begin my update, so press it I will. I'm asked if I want to upgrade, and it seems foolish to turn back now, so I cautiously press the Y key. I've accelerated this a little bit, as it can take a while. When the upload is finished, I'm told to turn it off and back on again, and doing so shows me I'm now on firmware 1.29b and core 3.01.05. Success! Booting back to the next main menu, I'm happy to see that the 28MHz mode is now available. And let's look at some software. Let's start with Driller. Released in 1987 by Incentive Software in the UK, it was one of the most graphically and mathematically intensive titles ever available for the Spectrum. Using one of the first true game engines, Freescape, it was a demonstration of ambition over ability. The poor old Spectrum just didn't have the horsepower to realise the dream. And on our Spectrum Next, 100% accurate as it is, we can see for ourselves how advanced and unfortunately slow the game was. So let's crank the Spectrum Next up to its maximum 28 MHz turbo mode and try again. Now that's a bit more like it. The extra oomph in the chip really makes the 3D work, and I'm sure that if this frame rate had been available in 1987, it would have blown my mind. Another game that I love but would definitely have been improved by a smoother frame rate was Elite by Firebird Software. On the standard spectrum, you can see the individual lines being drawn to form the 3D starship. But in 28 MHz mode, it's blindingly fast. I'm going to have a lot of fun trying these games out and investigating some of the newer next only releases that use all of the fancy new hardware to its full. Join me in the next video where we'll upgrade the hardware of this issue one next to bring it up to its maximum specification. Until then, 
If you like the channel, please subscribe, hit the like button and the bell to receive notifications of new content. See you next time in the shack. Bye for now.